So with that, we have our next speaker. And he also had his wedding in Ecuador. Hmm, we've already heard that one before. I wonder how that happened. Everyone, please welcome Sebastian to the stage. Uh, thank you, Jared. Uh, so yeah, my name is Sebastian, um, and I'm a data scientist at Vroom. Vroom is an e-commerce company that sells used cars and deliver them to your home. And today I will be talking about doubly robust estimation or causal effects in R. So what is a causal inference or what is causal inference in data science? Uh, so usually we run A-B tests for reaching causal conclusions or causal claims. Um, usually we would try to answer a question that says, will A or B cause a better outcome? Uh, where an outcome can be a better retention, better client retention. Um, but sometimes we have data on A and B, but that was not generated through a random expense experiment. We just happen to have it. And we still want to make some causal claim about A versus B, but relying solely on this data won't allow uh, us to make correct causal claims about you know, the difference between A and B. And, but we can use causal inference methods to try to estimate the causal effect of A versus B, even from a non-random experiment, so observational data. And so what is this talk about? Um, the goal of this talk is going to be to estimate a causal effect when you don't have data from coming from a randomized experiment. And the first strategy we're going to take, or I'm going to explain, is uh, reweighting each observation by the probability of receiving treatment A or B so that the data better approximates a randomized experiment or A-B test. The second strategy is just a modeling strategy in which we just model the outcome directly with a linear model and just figure out from there which, which one is better, either A or B. And the third strategy actually combines these two ideas to form what is called a doubly robust estimator, uh, which I will explain um, uh, what this means in a little bit. Uh, so first, uh, what is a causal effect? So actually causal effects are defined in terms of a counterfactual difference. So what this counterfactual difference is uh, or says is that on average, receiving treatment A compared to receiving treatment B will cause a difference in the outcome of some delta. Um, and this, this sounds uh, you know, very similar to like just your typical difference, but uh, the thing that we want to note here is that uh, Y of A is actually the outcome if treatment A had been received and Y of B is the outcome if treatment B had been received. So there are actually counterfactual outcomes that said, what would have happened had I received A? Or what would have happened had I received B? And so this is a little bit different than your usual mean difference. So your mean difference, what it, it is, is the average difference in outcomes between those receiving treatment A and B. So here we have mathematical notation of the mean of A minus the mean of, of B. So the mean of group A minus the mean of group B, um, which you can always calculate based on your data. And the, the funny fact is that the theory tells us that in an A-B test or data coming from an A-B test, we can estimate the causal effect delta that's based on counterfactual outcomes, which is what we really care about by simply using the differences of the means. Uh, and we can do this because of randomization. So in an A-B test, you calculate the difference of your group A and the difference in group B and subtract that. And that will be equal to the counterfactual difference of like, if I had received treatment A uh, versus if I had received treatment B, what, what would have happened? Uh, unfortunately, if you don't have randomized data, this is not necessarily true. Like you cannot simply look at two, two differences of two groups to arrive at a causal conclusion. Um, so here uh, I present a function which simulates data uh, from a non-randomized experiment. So here this function simulates observational data, which is another synonym for non-randomized da uh, data. And uh, this data, I first simulate a variable x1 and x2 and put them together in this x beta. So I, I put them there together. And then I have a variable a, which is my treatment assignment variable, which equals one if, if I receive treatment a and equals zero if I receive treatment b. 
And then what I'm really interested about is this y, which is my outcome, and my outcome depends on my variable x1 and x2, as well as my, as my treatment assignment a. And in front of a, we have a coefficient of 10. And so this 10 here is, a, is a actually a causal effect. So this is saying, if had I received a instead of b, I get an extra 10 of my outcome on average. Uh, unfortunately, this is not a randomized experiment. It's not a, it's not a A-B test because the probability of assigning A or assigning one or zero, uh, that probability that's defined here as prob of A depends on our variables X1 and X, X2, which also happen to uh, um, affect the outcome. So this is, this is not a randomized experiment. And so this, um, this makes it difficult to estimate the causal effect. So how, how is that different from an A-B test? So uh, the, I will replace the, these two lines, uh, the probability of A, which depends on the variables X1 and X2. And uh, the, 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 when, I, when I create this variable A, I, I create it such that it has a probability A. I will replace these two lines with uh, assigning A randomly one or zero, just with a 50-50 chance. Uh, so that, that, that would be an A-B test. And so if you have this data coming from this simulation or from, from data you, that you own, uh, the first thing that you can try is this naive estimator. And the naive estimator is just, again, the difference in the means between group A and group B. And here in mathematical notation, Y is your outcome and A equals one for treatment A and one minus A equals one for treatment B. So it's like the difference between group A and B. And so, you know, we're trying to estimate the true causal effect based on counterfactuals with this difference. And so, you know, this, might, this, this equation might look a little complex, but actually we can code it really easily in R, creating this function naive estimator, and we fitted the data. And with the summarized function, we calculate the mean of group B uh, by just applying the mean function to the outcome for those that receive treatment B. And then we calculate the mean of group A for those that receive, um, sorry, we, we, we calculate the mean of group a uh, by applying the mean to the outcome only to those that receive treatment A. And then we take the difference inside the, the mutated statement to, to arrive at our, 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 at our naive estimator. Um, unfortunately, as I said before, this naive estimator fails because we don't have randomized data. So in, in the difference of means does not ca capture exclusively the effect of treatment A or, or sorry, of the treatment variable on the outcome that mixes in effects from other variables as well. And so here I've run with the sim simulation, simulating observational data function. I've simulated this over 200 times. And I see that on average, the naive estimator, um, it's around 6.09, which is you know, pretty off from, from the vert, uh, horizontal black line of 10, which is the true causal effect. So we, so we are off. We, we don't really succeed using the naive estimator. And so in this case, the first strategy that you can try is the inverse probability weighting estimator and the intuition behind it is that in an experiment the probability of receiving a treatment are always equal across all units so in an a b test it would be 50 50 to receive either a or b and in a non-randomized experiment the probability of receiving the treatment depends on variables that affect the outcome and if we knew what these probabilities are we could reweight our samples such that the data will better match a randomized experiment and, and the regrading scheme, what it does is that for units of the experiment that were very likely to receive the treatment are weighting down and units that were very unlikely to receive the treatment are weighted up. And this kind of equalizes um, your sample uh, before analysis. But in reality, we don't know what these probabilities are. So we, we're going to try to estimate them using a model called the propensity score model. And you know, this all sounds very fancy, but the propensity score model is just a logistic regression of the probability of receiving the treatment. So if we code this in R, we can just make a propensity score model function that is really just hiding a logistic regression inside of it with the treatment as outcome, and then X1 and X2 as the variables that we think affect you know, the, the treatment, uh, receiving the treatment, the probability of receiving the treatment. So that's your propensity score model. And then what you're going to do is using this propensity score model, you're going to calculate the probability of receiving uh, treatment A, which in here is defined by this pi in red and the probability of receiving treatment B, which is one minus pi, so in red. 
here. And, and you, in this form, you make the inverse probability weighted estimator, which was the same as the naive estimator, but now you've weighted down by the probability of receiving treatment A, if you happen to receive treatment A, a or weighted down by the probability of receiving treatment B, if you receive treatment B. And if this looks a little complicated, again, you can just code it super fast in one function that I've, I've named here inverse prob probability weighting estimator. And you fit to this function the data and your propensity score model, your logistic regression. So in the first mutate statement, um, you calculate the probability of receiving treatment A with the predict function. And then you're going to calculate once again the, the mean of group B and the mean of group A that you're going to weight each observation uh, by the probability of receiving the treatment. So one minus prob is the probability of receiving treatment B. And for group A, you divide everything by the probability of receiving treatment A. And then at the end, in the last mutated statement, you again take the difference between these two means to arrive at, at your IPW estimator. Um, and how does this estimator perform? So we see from these uh, hundreds of simulations that um, on average, the IPW estimator is around 10.04, which is really close to the, the, the true causal effect of 10. So it performs pretty well. But you know this strategy could fail, and so let's say in the propensity score model definition, I forgot like variable two, you know, or it could be another thing like I don't, I don't, I don't know. I have to include it, so I messed it up. Uh, so in, in, then the previous slide wouldn't look as nice, so I will, I will get a, a an incorrect estimator as well. Uh, but that's okay. You can, if you think that's the case, you can try a second strategy, which is model the outcome. And I feel like this strategy is sort of like the default strategy of a data scientist. And you will just um, you know, create a linear model where your outcome is your y. And then that model depends on your variable x1 and x2 and your variable a for treatment assignment. And the coefficient of a, uh, the delta in front of a, it, that will be your estimator of the causal effect. And so easy, again, you can create a function called mean outcome model, which inside just, con just con contains this definition of this model that depends on this linear regression that has your outcome, and which depends on x1, x2, and the treatment indicator. And then you can create this other function, outcome model estimator, which you fitted the data, then creates this model, and then using the summary function, it recovers the coefficient of treatment to get this delta that uh, I've mentioned above. And that's easy to do. And then if we run this over many simulations, we again see that on average, it's 9.99, so it gets really close to the true causal effect of 10. So, you know, that, that's great. Um, but again, this, this model could also fail. We could have forgotten another of our variables, and then the previous strategy wouldn't work so well, right? So, that, I mean, that, that's kind of obvious, right? Um, so what could we do instead? So there's this idea of combining both approaches, so strategy one and strategy two. So. Um, the idea behind this is that if your logistic regression model for the propensity score is incorrect, the first strategy you know, won't work. If your linear regression for your outcome model is incorrect, it's the second strategy will not work. Um, but if you combine both approaches, actually it happens that you just need either ones or just one of them to work, or you just need one of them to be correct uh, for your estimator to, be uh, to work, but you don't need both models to be correct. Uh, so what this means is, as a data scientist, as a data scientist, you have one out of two chances to get the correct answer. And and so this this property is, is what is called the doub doubly robustness property. And so you know this this is this can also fail, but it's less likely to do so because now you're relying both on a linear regression and a log logistic regression, which you know gives you a higher chance to be successful. And so here I, I have the equation of what the double robust estimator is, and I've highlighted in red what we've added to the inverse probability weighted estimator. Um, and so in red, we see that in parentheses, we have the, the treatment variable, which you subtract your, your, your probability um, prediction from your propensity score model, and you multiply that this mu, which is just the, the prediction from your linear model. So here's where the linear model comes from. And so, you know, in the literature, they say that the term in red is said to augment the inverse probability weighted estimator. And the theory tells us that this estimator will work 
as long, so it will recover the true causal effect as long as either the logistic regression for propensity score model is correct or the linear regression for the outcome model is correct, but, but you don't need both of them to be correct at the same time. And you know, if you know, the previous equations seem a little bit complex, even got more complicated, but we can write it very succinctly in one function uh, here called double robust estimator. And to this function, you feed the data, the, the logistic regression for the propensity score model and the linear model for the mean outcome model. And inside the first mutate statement, you again calculate the probability of receiving treatment A with the predict function on the logistic regression. You calculate a prediction of your outcome based on your, or on your linear regression, again, with the prediction function, the predict function. And then you calculate this augmented term, which is just your treatment minus your probability times the prediction of the linear model. And then inside the summarized statement, you calculate the mean for outcome, uh, mean for group B, um, which again, you just take the mean of the outcome for that, for that group, um, subtract this augmented term and everything you divide Y minus prop, which is the probability of receiving treatment B. And you do the same for, for group A, you calculate the mean of group A by taking the outcome, subtracting the augmented part and dividing by the probability of receiving treatment A. And then in the last mutated statement, we just take the difference between these two means to arrive at the double robust estimator of the causal effect. Um, so how does this estimator perform? So we see in this simulation again, we've simulated it hundreds of times and we see that on average, uh, we get 10.1, 10, 10 which is really close to the causal effect of 10. Um, but now as an example, uh, I'll run the simulation again, but now I'll feed the estimator uh, a co an incorrect propensity score model where like I, I, I remove one of the variables that you should have. And so how does this perform? Um, so here, when the propensity score is incorrect, we see we, we have some decay in the performance, uh, but it still works pretty well. So on average, the double robust estimator is 10.49, which is pretty close to the true causal effect of 10. And likewise, um, let's say we, we fix the propensity score model, but now the, logic, uh, the linear model is incorrect. So I remove one of the variables that I should include in there and rerun the simulation and so we see that the double robust estimator still performs fairly well, where on average, uh, it, on average, this estimator is 10.38, which is again, still pretty close to the true causal effect of, uh, of 10. So in conclusion, what I want you to take out of my talk is that if you have non-randomized data, you cannot simply calculate the difference in means between group A and group B to estimate the causal effect. Um, you have, uh, you know, a few strategies that you can try. So the first one, you can try the inverse probability weighted estimator based on a logistic regression of the probability of receiving the treatment. The second thing that you could do is you can model the outcome based on a, a linear model with the confound, in, which includes the confounded variables as well as the treatment assignment variable. Or you can combine these two strategies uh, to use the doubly robust estimator, which will work as long as either the logistic regression or the, or the linear regression are correct, but you don't need both of them to be correct in order for this estimator to work. Uh, yeah, so that's the conclusion of my talk. And if you are interested in learning more, I highly recommend to read this, uh, this paper by Marie Davidian on weighting propensity score and estimation of causal treatment effects, a super simple paper. And basically my talk was based on, uh, on this paper, um, but it was based on this paper. And yeah, uh, I wanted to thank um, Ludmila Yanda, my wife, uh, for listening to my talk 10 times. And I would also like to uh, thank uh, the Vroom data team for listening to my talk once. Thank you. And so the mystery is solved why we had two speakers who had a wedding in Ecuador. Thank you very much for that talk. Uh, causal inferences, is so much is so hot right now. So it's good to have that talk. We'll have actually another causal inference talk coming up tomorrow.